If you look southeast in June from a site that is reasonably dark, you'll notice a band of light rising from the east. At first this just looks like more light pollution, but as it gets higher in the sky it resolves the distinct band of light, brightest in the south and dimming perceptibly towards its north side. This is the glow of our galaxy. Its presence marks the entry of the summer sky and its wonders. In this section of the video, I will discuss what you're seeing, our Milky Way. This is the galaxy that our Sun is a part of. I will show sections of the Milky Way that you cannot see from the U.S., talk about the latest ideas on the shape of the Milky Way, and show you what the Milky Way looks like in other portions of the electromagnetic spectrum. The summer sky provides opportunities to view virtually every type of astronomical object. Many of these are located along the band of Milky Way we will be discussing. I will tell you about them in later sections. For now, let's talk about the Milky Way. The brightest portion of the Milky Way visible from the Northern Hemisphere is here in and around the constellation Sagittarius. To modern eyes, this constellation appears to be a teapot. The naked eye visible Milky Way is the combined light of hundreds of thousands of stars. The Milky Way itself consists of billions of stars. The image as it appears now is similar to what you would see with your eyes. Our eyes perceive dim light as shades of gray. Color is only perceived as the source is brighter. Using a camera, we can view the colors that are too dim or too red for our limited color vision to detect. This makes several features easier to see. Note the dark area that divides the two light areas. These dark areas are dust clouds. The clouds are small particles from a few molecules to 0.1 millimeter that are the detritus left over as stars die. The small grains diffuse visible light, hiding the brighter areas of the galaxy. While visible light cannot penetrate the dust, other portions of the, of the electromagnetic spectra do. The dust itself also radiates in other portions of the electromagnetic spectra. We will see this later in the video. Note the reddish areas on either side of the dark band. The red color mostly comes from hydrogen gas. This is the stuff of new solar systems. The center of our galaxy is located about here. The dust clouds hide the bright center of the Milky Way from viewing, at least in visible light. The Milky Way circles the Earth as a nearly continuous band of light. The portion of Sagittarius shown here is the brightest section visible in the U.S. It is also the place where the Milky Way dips below our southern horizon. Let's take a tour of the entire Milky Way. This strip image of the Milky Way in visible light was compiled by Axel Mellinger. The author is grateful for the permission to use it in his video. Since the entire Milky Way is never visible at the same time, this required a series of pictures taken from several locations around the world. For more information, see Mellinger's website, which is listed in the credits at the end of the movie. Let's get our bearings again. First, we will move north to see the other prominent landmark of the northern sky, the Summer Triangle. Three bright stars dominate the eastern sky in early June. As the summer progresses, these will be overhead at twilight. We call these stars the Summer Triangle. Vega in the constellation Lyra is at the top of the photo. Altair in the constellation Aquilia is to the right. Deneb is to the left with its constellation Cygnus in the center. We will use these stars in later sections to find summer deep sky objects. But now let's move on to the north. Continuing north from Cygnus, we reach Cassiopeia, which will be low in the north during the summer. It will be easier to view this portion of the Milky Way in the winter from the U.S. The Milky Way continues from Cassiopeia to the other sections of the winter Milky Way. These are on the right of this strip of images. Since many of the viewers may not be familiar with what is below the horizon for us in the U.S., let me introduce you to some of the southern sky objects. The Alpha Centauri system is the closest star system to the Earth at about four light years. The Southern Cross is a famous constellation of the southern skies that is on the Australia and New Zealand flags. The bright area in the constellation Carina contains the nebula associated with the star Eta Carina. This is a supernova in the making. Continuing further, we now start moving north again, but to a portion of the sky hidden by the summer sun. We are now entering the portion of the Milky Way visible in the winter from the U.S. Sirius is the brightest star in the sky and shines brightly over the winter sky. Most of the constellation Orion lies below this strip. The constellation Gemini is directly above it. As we continue moving further north, we move through Auriga, Perseus, and again come to Cassiopeia. 
That completes our tour of the Milky Way. Looking at the entire panorama, the dust lane and the center bulge are easily seen. The public is most familiar with photos taken in visual light using the Hubble telescope. Astronomers also use a variety of other land and space instruments to examine the sky. Each type of radiation tells a story about a particular kind of activity. Gamma rays are the shortest wavelength and the most energetic. These have even more energy than the X-rays we all experience at our dentist's office. They are produced by high energy processes like those happening in the center of our galaxy. The bright compact sources are associated with pulsars, another source of gamma rays. This gamma ray image was compiled by the Compton Gamma Ray Satellite. This shows what the Milky Way looks like at 408 MHz in radio wavelengths. Most of the emission is from electrons moving through magnetic fields at nearly the speed of light. This happens near supernova. Radio is also used to probe the center of our galaxy. This infrared image is from the Infrared Astronomical Satellite. Most of the emission is heat from interstellar dust warmed by absorbed starlight, including star-forming regions embedded in interstellar clouds. One product of observing of these various wavelengths is that we now can map stars orbiting the black hole at the center of the galaxy. This movie was compiled by UCLA using the Keck telescope, observing using infrared radiation at 2.2 microns. For more information, see the references in the credits, or Malia's book also listed in the credits. We can tell from the various spectra that the Milky Way is a flat disk with a central bulge. From the side, our galaxy would look like this picture of NGC 4565. Determining the shape beyond that requires some detective work, and detailed analysis in all of the various bands of radiation as shown previously. In recent years, there's been a lot of progress. Astronomers can tell that the central bulge is not spherical. Instead, it is what is called a barred spiral. This picture of M109, taken by local astrophotographer Richard Crisp, shows a galaxy whose shape is similar to the Milky Way's. But what is the shape of the spiral arms? Since we're inside the disk, that level of detail is not so easy to determine. The number of major arms in the Milky Way is something that has changed as we learn more. According to the latest research, the galaxy has two principal arms, the Perseus arm, which will be in our winter sky, and the Scutum Centaurus arm, which contributes to what we see in our summer sky. The Sun is in a minor arm called the Orion Spur. Most of the stars we can distinguish with our unaided eyes are also here. Since we are located in the plane of the arms, it's difficult to tell where one arm begins and another ends in the sky. The work to determine the structure has instead been done by careful measurements. See the credits for more information of how the shape of the galaxy was determined. I hope this gives you a better appreciation of what the glow in the sky is. In the next session we will talk about some of the more interesting deep space objects of summer and how to find them.